The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, other government officials and Christian leaders on Sunday attended the interdenominational church prayer service against the COVID-19 pandemic. The service is the culmination of three days of fasting and prayer organized by the Nigeria Inter Nigerian Interreligious Council. Meanwhile, the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 had asked Christians and Muslims to resort to prayers as the number of COVID-19 cases continue to rise across the country. An Islamic prayer was held on Friday in Abuja, where special prayers were rendered against the deadly virus. This comes as the, nation's, uh, the nation records 603 more COVID-19 cases, raising the nation's total confirmed infections above the 28,000 mark. Moving on, the Nigerian Medical Association, NMA Cross River Chapter, has withdrawn its services from all medical facilities in the state. This was relayed in a letter addressed to the Minister of Health, Osage Haniri, from the state chairman of the association, Agam Ayuk, on Sunday. Ayuk wondered why the Nigeria Center for Disease Control was not including Cross River in its daily COVID-19 update. Cross River, Cross River is the only state in Nigeria where no single case of COVID-19 has been officially confirmed. The association claimed five positive cases had had a test done at an NCDC-approved laboratory, but their results were not being published in the agency's situation report. Reportedly, Congress demands update of the NCDC situation report as a matter of urgent public health interest. It added that, and I quote, the NCDC is put on notice that the Cross River State Government has abdicated her responsibility of contact tracing, treatment, and care for the five confirmed cases, which may not be unconnected with the delay in the publication of the results by NCDC, end of quote. The Africa Center for Disease Control, ACDC, has revealed that almost half of the persons who contacted the dreaded novel coronavirus in Africa's COVID-19 COVID COVID have recovered from the disease. According to data published on the agency's website, out of the 433,500 cases of the virus in Africa as of Friday, 3rd of June, 208,400 of them have fully recovered and being discharged. Prior to this report, there were fears that Africa would not be able to cope with the contagion, which many felt would overwhelm the continent's health systems. We now have Professor Chima Onoka, who is the Executive Secretary, Christian Medical and Dental Association of Nigeria, to take a look at this new development. Good to have you, Professor. Um, good to have you. Good morning, Amaka. Thank you for joining us. Now, according to the ACDC, which is Africa Center for Disease Control, out of the 433,500 cases of the virus in Africa as of Friday, 208,400 of them have fully recovered and discharged. What deductions can be drawn from this uh, development? Thank you very much. The important thing there is that something is protecting africans or making us recover better um especially from severe disease and its consequences um but that doesn't make us to relax because um we're having many deaths loved ones are dying families are in trouble children are being orphaned and um it's a it's a big issue and so we need to sustain the efforts we're making mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. But what's your assessment of the measures being rolled out so far in Nigeria and Africa, you know, as a whole to combat the spread of uh, the virus? I think that the African government are doing what is possible within their capacity. Even in the countries outside of Africa, they are going through lots of challenges. The same supply chain issues, um, the issues of... Um, um, behavior, citizen behavior as expected in the right way, you know, taking responsibility for their lives <clears throat> and for preventive measures. So, but to say specifically about the government, I, I, the health systems um, can't cope with the kind of numbers we've seen outside. I think that because a lot of people have... Um, in, uh, you know, disease that isn't coming up to the clinical level in terms of being a very difficult um, situation, we are trying to cope. 
if those who really have COVID in Nigeria, many African countries, go to the health facilities, we can't cope. We are seeing clearly that despite the preventive measures, advice, um, we still have a lot of numbers, especially when, wherever, whenever we decide we are courageous enough to do testing, like some state governments are doing, you know, with the executives, their ex school, their families, it's just rising. I'm not um, trying to say things that are out of um, the way, but if we actually find out those who have COVID in Nigeria, it will probably be five to 10 times the number that is being reported. So we have limits, limits, big challenges, big challenges. And I think we need to wake up to that fact. One major thing I want to point out at the moment is the kind of things that are said about um, state government and uh, private facilities being on their own, that they should take responsibility. I don't think that um, that's the best way to go about it because people are using those places. If private facilities charge citizens for the personal protective equipment they need for their daily care, and I mean caring for those who come to hospital for whatever reason and who may be suspected, our citizens cannot pay for private care. And so whatever funds that are coming, states for their general hospitals and private facilities need to feel that they are being subsidized to support the care for citizens. And I think whatever funds that come anywhere at the national level, wherever, regional level, is meant for all Nigerians, irrespective of where they seek care. So I think we can do better. I think those in government are thinking in all that direction, and we need to support them to promote that. That and take a look at the recovery, you know, the numbers that have recovered so far. It almost looks like it's good news to know that, yes, people are recovering. But what's your assessment? I mean, as a professor of community medicine, of the treatment of COVID-19 patients, some people have sought to know what is the secret to their recovery. Is there any reason why we are not even told what, uh, what, what, is, what is it they are using to uh, kind of get these people who have recovered to have recovered? Um, the way we are structured at the moment um, is difficult to say that this is of an overall clinical guideline. Um, that kind of thing happens in many other countries, but I think it's where we need to get to. So in various hospitals, people are trying things and doing all of that, but we know um, that as evidence emerges, clinicians are trying them out. Um, a lot of what goes on is supportive, basically supportive. Um, if somebody really needs oxygen, you get oxygen. If you want to be sure that there's no malaria parasite hanging around, you treat for that. Um, and then with the emergence of, you know, drugs like dexamethasone as um, being useful, I suspect that people are already trying that out locally. Um, and that's it, you know. Of course, we know in some other countries, the intensifier has been approved. And um, I think all that is going on in some way. <laughs> Even when um, chloroquine was, hydrochloroquine was being tested, I know some clinicians were trying it out as well. Mm. But ultimately, the main thing is supportive. Right. Support the lungs to stay, prevent infections, treat any other kind of infection that may be there keep the lungs going, and then, um, you know, if there is a way of reducing inflammatory action, that is done. Mm. So, uh, and then, you know, whatever you else go. is needed, people are given, mm. really. But it's largely supportive. All right, before I let you go, what should be our long-term strategy to flattening the curve and eventually returning to normal? Number one, I think, we need to pay more attention to private 
um, public facilities that are also owned by government, state governments especially. Two, the citizen action needs to continue. Um, people are losing interest while it is spreading. <laughs> we need to take responsibility. I always maintain <clears throat> where we are that we're people of faith. And I think God is helping us. And we should not discount that. And I'm glad that prayers are going on everywhere, like you announced. We're people of faith, and in all this, God is still in charge, mm -hmm. and um, He will show us mercy. So we need to sustain that, but we need to take responsibility as individuals, um, which I think is what God expects us to do as well, um, to prevent things. And so we need to sustain that information. Mm -hmm. And then, as the testing increases um, and treatment types also increase. Um, I think we need to finance that in a more systematic way. Right. I will also add finally that dependence just on temporary structures wouldn't help us because it's a long journey. We should strengthen the more routine services and systems and infrastructure. That is important for nation building.